Mitt Romney. So, you're going to run for president as a Republican. Wow. You've got one hell of a nerve, sir. It's Romney care. You are not a Republican in any honest sense of the word. You are not a conservative on any level. I'm someone who is moderate and that my, my views are progressive. You have a serious lack of integrity. With the ad I saw, I haven't seen him. With the ad I saw, I haven't seen him. And your motives are utterly self-centered. Listen to my words. What? Listen to my words. I that's, said, that's semantics. So running your campaign that and is giving a you word. advice? Come on. Me, 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 me. You've gotten through your whole life on your pedigree, your looks, your money, and your ability to BS people. All right, you've had your chance. Anything else you want to say? Well, I'm going to see what you're going to say. You, sir, are an idiot. But you know what, Mitt? The times, they're a-changing. You're lacking the one quality that we, the people, now non-negotiably insist upon. That quality, sir, is integrity, and you don't have it. And it, he, he clearly got uh, upset with the, the question. He, he was irritated by the interview uh, after we were done. He said, he, said to uh, he thought it was overly aggressive. He did? And, he said uh, that to you? He said it was overly he, aggressive? He did. Wow. And... As we were walking in the walk and talk, and then after we finished, he uh, went to his holding room and then uh, came back and said he, he didn't like the interview and thought it was uh, uncalled for. The fact that they said, in not so many words, that, that uh, Mitt Romney lacked conviction. Some GOP candidates, they also raise mammoth amounts of cash, and we need to ask them too. What, if anything, do their donors expect in return for their investments? We need to know this because our country can't afford more trillion dollar thank you notes to campaign backers. Big campaign donors got nice returns for their investments in him. The challenge is not simply to replace Obama in 2012, but the real challenge is who and what we will replace him with. If we don't change the team and the game plan, we won't save our country. It is an important question and it cuts to the heart of our problem. term for this is pay to play. It is amazing to me that even some good conservatives, they run away from being honest and straight up with us about what needs to be done. They don't want to rock the boat. They, you know, can't hurt future election prospects, evidently. They they just talk vaguely about cuts and then they move on. Too busy saying what they think that we want to hear and instead they should be telling us what needs to be said, what needs to be done.
But listen closely to what he says. All of his solutions, they're going to revolve around more of the same, more payoffs for his friends and supporters. His plan is the same as it's always been. We could go on all day about the problems caused by the status quo in Washington. Status quo, I think it's Latin for more of the same of the mess that we're in. That status quo won't work anymore. One day last March, two Utah companies each sent a million dollars to an organization supporting Mitt Romney for president. Now, the companies share an address in Provo, and today, Fox 13's Max Roth went there to find out what they do. Fox 13's Max Roth joins us tonight in studio. Max. Yeah, Hope and Bob, Restore Our Future is a so-called super PAC. It's a political action committee that can take donations of any size so long as they disclose the donors. The Supreme Court made that legal in March of 2009. In March of this year, two men from Utah with two obscure companies have shown just how much presidential politics have changed. From January through June, Restore Our Future got three $1 million donations, two of them from this building in Provo, from Eli Publishing and Fate LLC. For donors making political history, they're hard to find. No listing on the directory, and 420 isn't even on any door in the building. Wanted to talk with someone from Eli or Fate. But the nice folks in Suite 400 said they were also 420. Familiar with those? I, I am not, so yeah. I don't know, and I'm, I don't work for Eli. Okay. And is Fate located here too, F8? No. Okay. okay. They, they listed this address as their address on the political I'm donation. not familiar with F8. Are you familiar with F8? The donations are being uh, tied to companies uh, that you know, we don't know anything about. State corporate records show Steve Lund as the only officer in Eli Publishing. He's a co-founder and former CEO of the Newskin Corporation. Fate LLC was created by Jeremy Blickenstaff, an attorney who also has ties to Newskin. Contacted by Fox 13, Lund says he's not hiding anything. He's glad to donate a million dollars. He says it shows how concerned he is about the direction of the country. Two years ago, Lund and Blickenstaff could express their concern with just over $2,000 each, maybe buying one or two prime commercial slots in a primary state. This year, their money can flood the airwaves where the balance is teetering. The doors have been blown off the wall in terms of how much money can flow into political committees. Restore Our Future raised $12 million from January through June, but they're not alone. A super PAC called Priorities USA is supporting President Obama. They've only raised about $3 million, $2 million of that, coming from Jeffrey Katzenberg of DreamWorks Animation. Live in studio, Max Roth, Fox 13 News, Utah. Cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four flushing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lip, worm headed sack of monkey shit he is. I am personally of the, of the belief that money plays a much more important role in what is done in Washington than we believe. I personally believe that when campaigns spend the kind of money they're now spending, this race, I understand, Ted Kennedy will spend about $10 million to be reelected. He's been in 32 years. Ten million dollars. I think that's wrong because, and that's not his own money. That's all from other people. And to get that kind of money, you've got to cozy up as an incumbent to all of the special interest groups who can go out and raise money for you from their members. And that, ki that kind of relationship has an influence on the way you're going to vote. But these kinds of associations between money and politics, in my view, are wrong. And for that reason, I would like to have campaign spending limits. And to say we're not going to spend more than this in certain campaigns, in a campaign for senator or a U.S. representative and so forth, because otherwise I think you have money playing far too important a role. I also would abolish PACs. You probably have one. I don't like them. I don't like the influence of, of money, whether it's business, labor, or any other group. I do not like that kind of influence. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing. Mitt Romney's gang.
formed a super PAC just for the purpose of taking a million dollar check from a friend of his and hide it, and then they disbanded it two weeks later. I also would abolish PACs. You probably have one. I don't like them. Yeah. That's what's wrong with American politics. I do not like that kind of influence. Yeah. Mitt Romney and people like that, I'm being very specific here. He's not a corrupt man, but the system is corrupt. Oh, no. You kidding me. To get that kind of money, you've got to cozy up as an incumbent to all of the special interest groups who can go out and raise money for you from their members. And that, ki that kind of relationship has an influence on the way you're going to vote. Oh. Mitt Romney says he knows nothing about a mysterious $1 million donation given to one of the super PACs supporting his candidacy. This is a million dollar donation that comes from a company that dissolved just before the donation was reported to the FEC. I also would abolish PACs. Sorry. Team 5 investigates Janet Wu follows the trail. The super PAC is called Restore Our Future, created by Mitt Romney's former aides. I also would abolish PACs. It reported within the first six months of this year over $12 million in contributions, including four donations from individuals or corporations of $1 million each. And that, ki that kind of relationship has an influence on the way you're going to vote. Romney's campaign says it knows nothing, since the PAC is a completely separate organization. It's very simple. The rich have the biggest say here. And what we, we're seeing here is the old notion of plausible deniability on the candidate's part. Among the four mega contributors is a company called W Span, which existed only four months this year, dissolving weeks after making its $1 million contribution. The company was formed by Boston attorney Cameron Casey of Ropes and Gray, which handles much of the legal work for Romney, some of his aides, and Bain Capital, where Romney once worked. We rob banks. W Spain may not exist anymore, but its offices used to be listed in the same building as Bain Capital in New York City. It doesn't surprise me because uh, last year's uh, Supreme Court ruling, Citizens United, uh, opened the door for unlimited secret donations uh, to super PACs. I also would abolish PACs. The main purpose of it is clearly to get around disclosure laws. It strains credulity that they don't know, the Romney camp, what's going on. And that someone's going to an awful lot of trouble not to leave a, a footprint here. Whoa. I think I just figured something out, Beavis. <laughs> what? <laughs> this sucks. It's the Sergeant Schultz uh, defense from Hogan's Heroes. I know nothing, I know nothing, but he probably does know something. This sucks more than anything that I've ever sucked before. Now, Mitt, you may be saying to yourself, Ann, where's the love? I'm a conservative. I'm a Republican. Don't be a play hater. Well, well, Mitt, I'll tell you. The love dried up in a big hurry when I actually researched you and your record. The more I read, the more nauseous I became. I don't like your jerk-off name. I don't like your jerk-off face. I don't like your jerk-off behavior. And I don't like you jerk-off. Where to begin? First, homosexual marriage. Mitt, when you were governor of Massachusetts, you single-handedly, by an illegal unconstitutional executive fiat imposed a new law and apparently in the recesses of your vastly superior mind nullified an existing law thus ordering town clerks to issue same-sex marriage licenses effective may 17 2004. i know what you're thinking yeah come on say it nice pink Shirt you got. Say it. When you say, if you don't mind me saying, when you say I'm in favor of gay rights, you're not. You're in favor of some. Well, what, what happened was that the, gay, right? the gay community, uh, the gay community changed their perspective as to what they wanted. Wait, who are you calling a cheetah? I want fair and square. <laughs> but seriously. Well, uh, I made it real clear from the very beginning that I favor uh, marriage between one man and a woman. I'm not in favor of same-sex marriage. I'm not in favor of civil union. Oh my gosh, look how fast that cheetah's going. Woo, white pow. Pull over, those paws are too fast. There was no change in law passed by the state legislature, and there was no action or order with regards to this by the state Supreme Court. You simply concocted a new law and demanded that it be implemented, apparently under the impression that the governorship of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is a dictatorial position and not merely a branch of a three-branched constitutional commonwealth. Don't call me stupid. Oh, 
right to call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people. Man, I'll tell you, we conservatives, we Republicans, have, we Americans have a really, really big problem with men who think that they are dictators. We have a really big problem with people who think that they transcend the rule of law. There are two possibilities here. Either you are stupid to the point that you do not understand rudimentary diaper school civics concepts, or you're a nefarious character who believes that your superior intellect and will is itself the rule of law. Either way, you're disqualified and you need to go home, Willard. Honey Badger don't care. Honey Badger don't give a shit. It just takes what it wants. Mitt Romney has gone on the attack against his rival Newt Gingrich, raising questions about Gingrich's now infamous spending at Tiffany's, the New York jewelry store. But the fact is, Romney is by far the wealthiest of the candidates for president this year, with a net worth estimated at over a quarter billion dollars, with a B. And as we found, his taste can be every bit as lavish as those of Gingrich. Romney has not made public his latest federal tax returns, but financial disclosure forms required of all candidates reveal that he and his wife have had millions of dollars in offshore funds in the Cayman Islands and elsewhere, places that offer huge tax advantages to investors. <laughs> well, the primary advantage to setting those funds up in an offshore jurisdiction like the Cayman Islands or Bermuda is that it helps the investors avoid tax. The Romney campaign says he has paid taxes on all of his income, including the offshore investments, and the investments are now held in a blind trust. But tax experts say the fact that Romney's company, Bain Capital, under his leadership, established investment funds offshore in the first place helped them to attract business from people looking to avoid U.S. taxes. <laughs> Next, let's turn to an incident in 2002 when you promised the log cabin Republicans in Massachusetts, which is a lobbying organization of homosexual Republicans, that in exchange for their vocal support and endorsement of you in your campaign for Massachusetts governor, that you would not oppose same-sex marriage. What we need to focus on here is the word exchange. Mitt, I don't know if a man like you even possesses the moral capacity to comprehend what I'm about to say, but let's give it the old college try. Questions of fundamental morality, questions of sin, Questions of the core foundational elements of human civilization, namely marriage and the nuclear family unit, are not units of political currency to be bartered and exchanged. Mitt, <laughs> people of integrity either believe something or they don't. What people of integrity never, ever, ever do is put their core moral beliefs out as something to be auctioned off in some sleazy quid pro quo. Tell me, Willard, what other beliefs or principles are you willing to whore out in exchange for political support? Well, what are you asking me for? What price would you put on, oh, I don't know, the Fourth Amendment? You despise me, don't you? Well, if I gave you any thought, I probably would. Or for that matter, the First Amendment. Oh, well, <laughs> la-di-da, la-di-da, la-la, yeah. What's your price? A hundred million? Your presidential library? The point is, you have no personal integrity. Is this true? Yes, it's true. Men like you make me sick. Go home, Willard. For me, you're somewhere between a cockroach and that white stuff that accumulates at the corner of your mouth when you're really thirsty. There is so much more to cover. Your support of McCain-Feingold campaign finance reform. My own view is that, that I don't like all the influence of money in politics. I know that. You know that. I also would abolish PACs. You probably have one. I don't like them. Sir, Governor, I wish you would calmly and directly state it is your former staff running the PAC, it is your millionaire friends giving to the PAC, and you know some of the ads are untrue. Just say that, straightforward. 
<laughs> well, of course it's former staff of mine. And of course there are people who support me. They wouldn't be putting money into a pack that supports me if there were people who support me. Why don't you just tell them stop asking questions? And with regards to their ads, I haven't seen them. And as you know, under the law, I can't direct their ads. You probably have one. I don't like them. But the court was saying, look, if some companies can make contributions, like newspapers and unions, then others ought to be able to as well. And, and in my view, the right answer, and right now people can give money through entities where they're, they're hidden. We don't know who they are. I'd rather just say I want to know who they are and I want to see it written down. Something funny? Something funny? No, 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 no. You are mincing support of the McCain-Kennedy illegal alien amnesty plan? My own view is, consistent with what you saw in the Lowell Sun, that those people who have come here illegally and are in this country, the 12 million or so that are here illegally, should be able to sign up for permanent residency or citizenship. We're not going to have an amnesty system that says the people who come here illegally get to stay for the rest of their life in this country legally. Houston, we have a problem. Should be able to sign up for permanent residency or citizenship. We're not going to have an amnesty system. People, these have been some of the best oral reports I've ever heard. And you're jumping on the bandwagon of the most egregious scam and hoax in the history of the world. Man-made global warming and carbon dioxide pollution. I, I don't uh, speak for the scientific community, of course. Um, but I believe the world is getting warmer. I, 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 I can't prove that. Uh, but I believe, based on what I read, that the world, world is getting warmer. Uh, and, and number two, I believe that humans contribute to that. I, I don't know how much our contribution is to that because I know there's been there have been periods of, of greater uh, heat uh, and warmth in the past, but, but I believe that we contribute to that. And so I think it's important for us to reduce our emissions of, of pollutants and greenhouse gases that may well be significant contributors to, uh, to the climate change and the, and the global warming that you're seeing. And what America can do by becoming energy independent and stopping the, the increase, the growth in our CO2 emissions, that's what the whole world wants to see happen. And so those are things which are the toughest things we have to do. Number two, I want to work with other nations in the world to establish, uh, if you will, limits and, and guidelines for the rest of the, the rest of the world and whether we have, uh, there are various forms of being able to limit how much CO2 is emitted by different nations. But we can become far more effective by pursuing my policy of energy independence. And if we can get China and India and Brazil and the rest of the world also to to, to come together in a global effort, then that's going to change the, the uh, if you will, the CO2 emissions for the entire planet. And that's something I support. I do want to make sure, however, that we don't end up with, with something like the Kyoto Accord, which said, okay, America, you've got to reduce your CO2 according to these limits that we're putting in this, this uh, provision, but China and India don't have to. That, in my opinion, would have a, frankly, a negative impact on the planet. Because what would happen if if, the, if nations like ours say we're going to strictly limit our CO2 emissions, bring them down, but if we let a nation like China not have to do that at all, then what's going to happen is the energy intensive industries here are going to get up and go there. And you'll end up having more pollution and more CO2 because they'll go to a place that's just burning coal, dirty coal. They're building a new power plant, I'm told, as much as one a week, a new coal power plant every week. Think about that. My, my view is that we don't know what's causing climate change on this planet. And the idea of spending trillions and trillions of dollars to try and reduce CO2 emissions is not the right course for us. And that's going to change the, the uh, if you will, the CO2 emissions for the entire planet. And that's something I support. Do I think the world's getting hotter? Yeah, I don't know that, but I, I think it is. Uh, I'm not a scientist. Do I think we contribute to it? I don't know about how much. My view with regards to energy policy is pretty straightforward. Let's aggressively develop our oil, our gas, our coal. Dirty coal. We have massive energy resources. Let's grant the permits. Dirty coal. You said, you said it's all caused by humans. They're mostly caused by humans. All right. I don't know if it is or it's not. And, and, and there's, a, there's a divergence of opinion on that. So do I think humans contribute to it? Yes. Dirty coal. I don't know if it's mostly caused by humans. And so what I'm not willing to do is to spend trillions of dollars on something I don't know the answer to. And what America can do by becoming energy independent and stopping the, the increase, the growth in our CO2 emissions, that's what the whole world wants to see happen. 
less developed sources of energy, which happen to be domestic, which are not CO2 committing, uh, emitting. Dirty coal. Let's aggressively develop our oil, our gas, our coal. Dirty coal. But I do not believe in cap and trade. I do not believe in putting a carbon tax on. Then that's going to change the, the uh, if you will, the CO2 emissions for the entire planet. And that's something I support. Uh, there are others who think that's the right way to go. I oppose those. And, uh, uh, and, and my focus as it comes to this topic is to get us off of our dependence on foreign oil, to use our natural gas, to drill for our oil, to use our coal. Dirty coal. Clean coal. Dirty coal. Clean coal. Dirty coal. Clean coal. Dirty coal. To develop nuclear power, to use solar and wind and efficiency measures, that's my priority. And there are other people who would like to put in place a cap and trade program. And that's something I support. And dramatically increase the cost of energy. That's their view. By the way, that will kill a lot of jobs. Hey, genius, maybe you didn't get the memo, but the two octillion ton fusion gas ball up in the sky that we lowly riffraff called the sun is what determines the weather, not cars or factories or cow farts. Sunny day, sleeping up. So take your Marxist cap and trade scheme and cram it up your ass. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. Presidential candidate Mitt Romney's apparent flip-flop this week on global warming. And we're back now with the panel. I, I think we would all agree that, that Mitt Romney's biggest potential liability is his reputation as a flip-flopper who changes position because of, of political expedience. And he seemed to have a bad week. As you saw, he seemed to change his position from what he had here on global warming and the need to control greenhouse gas com emissions. No, 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 no. Vacuum! <laughs> no! And this was just days after he appeared to flip on the question of whether or not to support that ballot initiative uh, in Ohio uh, and whether he supports the, the John Kasich, the Ohio governor's plan to limit collective bargaining for public workers. Brit how big a problem is this for him? I think it's, it is his single biggest problem, really, apart from the fact that because of the flips or because of the positions he's flipping from or positions to the left of where the core of the Republican Party is, people don't trust him as a conservative. And I would say, you know, people usually like it if you change positions and you come toward their position. Mm -hmm. But you, you're, there's a, you're only allowed a certain number of flips before people begin to doubt your character. Uh, and I think Romney exhausted his quota some time back. And these fresh ones, uh, I think, are, are over the limit. And I think they hurt. And I don't think the fact that he's flipping in a direction that Republicans like uh, it will help very much because they, they, I think they don't trust him. But I believe the world is getting warmer. I believe the humans contribute to that. Hey, speaking of Marxism, that brings us to Romney care. <laughs> Hey, America, did you guys know that Mitt Romney implemented a Marxist socialist universal health care law in Massachusetts called Romney Care? This is the program that Obamacare was modeled off of. For the past year, conservatives have been campaigning against Obama's health care plan. Now they want to repeal it, they want to file lawsuits to overturn it in the courts, and yet their front-running presidential candidate is Mitt Romney, who authored a very similar plan when he was governor of Massachusetts. All the way down to the individual mandate that everyone must purchase health insurance that conforms with government coverage requirements. He was kind of quiet during 2009. Now in 2010, he's out there putting himself forward to be the leader of the Republican Party. And in particular, he's campaigning against Obamacare. As President Obama himself has pointed out, Romney is the guy who created the prototype for Obamacare. Uh, in fact, uh, I agree with... Uh... Mitt Romney, who recently said he's proud of what he accomplished on health care in Massachusetts. When you run down the list of elements in the Obama plan and the Romney plan, they are all identical. He's right. The individual mandate, the requirement that insurers cover sick people at the same premiums as everyone else, the creation of a new government bureaucracy called an exchange that regulates health insurance, the subsidies to help people purchase private health insurance and comply with that mandate. The expansion of new government programs. It's, uh, it's very different than Obamacare in a couple of important ways. Okay. In every important respect, the Obama plan and the Romney plan are identical.
President Obama rammed a health care bill through Congress on a straight party line vote, no Republican supporters. But he still likes this image of himself as bipartisan. So he's been going around saying, hey, I got some ideas from the Heritage Foundation. I got a lot of ideas from Mitt Romney's plan in Massachusetts. And that's something Romney is trying to get out from under. Romney doesn't want Republicans to think that he provided the model for Obamacare. And a lot of times, Obama exaggerates this bipartisan idea. But in this particular case, Obama's got a point. Romney Care did model a lot of the ideas that ended up being the framework for Obama's plan. And that's the connection Romney doesn't want people to see. This legislation looks an awful lot like what happened in Massachusetts, and I'm sure Governor Romney hates every time I say that. There are some similarities, and there's some differences. I like some of the similarities. I dislike most of the differences. How can he lead the charge against a health care plan that is modeled on his own? Some similarities, some differences, and uh, I hope we're ultimately able to uh, eliminate some of the differences, repeal the bad, uh, and keep the good. Are you threatening me? <laughs> you do not want to face the wrath of my bunghole! How can he go around denouncing a government takeover and an intrusion into people's rights when he authored a very similar plan? Uh, I know some people say, gee, your Massachusetts health care plan isn't conservative. I say, oh, yes, it is. Well, he's getting a lot of flack from conservatives who don't think an individual mandate sounds like the limited government that they thought conservatives believed in. So he's come out saying, well, it's a matter of personal responsibility, and that's a bedrock conservative principle. No more free riders. People have to take personal responsibility. You may call this an individual mandate. I don't. I call it the personal responsibility principle. His concept of responsibility, which is also President Obama's concept, is that the government decides what you have to do, like you must buy health insurance. And then the government will decide what benefits you get. Other people think personal responsibility means you make the decisions about your life and you accept the consequences of your decision. Both the Romney plan and the Obama plan are essentially a government takeover of the healthcare sector of the economy. <laughs> you can make a valid argument that only the state government should be able to do that and not the federal government. State should be able to solve state problems. But if you're making that argument to people who are opposed to any government takeover of health insurance, they're probably not going to find that persuasive. Daniel Gross wrote a column in Newsweek saying that Obama needs a really smart guy to run this health care plan. He said he needs somebody with strong management experience, somebody who doesn't have a job right now, and somebody who has experience implementing a government mandate insurance exchange health care plan. And who is that person but Mitt Romney? That was one of the most forward-thinking plans I'd seen, and yet, for some reason, you don't seem to talk about this in front of conservative Republican groups. Is there a reason why you don't take credit for it? You, you must not be going to my meetings, because every single stump speech I give that I can think of, every one of my, uh, we call them Ask Mid Anything town halls, I talk about my health care plan, which is a way to get people in this country insured without expanding government programs without expanding Medicaid, but instead he helping people get private market-based insurance. So it's one of the things I'm most proud of. And I hope I get a chance to debate Hillary Clinton on the very topic, because when I'm asked what the biggest difference is between my plan and her plan, I'll say that mine got passed. He's right. Well, that's what we did in Massachusetts, and that is we put together an exchange, and the pr president's copying that idea. I'm glad to hear that. One of the reasons it saves money is that we found roughly half of those without insurance could afford to buy it. They just weren't buying it. We let people buy their own private insurance. They just weren't buying it. Did you also know that Romney Care fully finances abortion with a mere $50 copay? And Mitt Romney claims today to be pro-life. Really, Mitt? I wonder how many human beings in Massachusetts have been torn limb from limb, struggling to get away from the abortionist suction hose or have had their skin burned off of them by a saline abortion. 
Or how many of the lucky ones simply and quickly had their craniums crushed and they were decapitated by a pair of forceps, all subsidized by the taxpayers of Massachusetts at your command? If abortion is morally wrong, aren't you responsible for discouraging it? One of the great things about our nation, Sally, is that we're each entitled to have strong personal beliefs. And we encourage other people to do the same. But as a nation, we recognize the right of all people to believe as they want and not to impose our beliefs on other people. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I have since the time that my mom took that position when she ran in 1970 as a U.S. Senate candidate. I believe that since Roe v. Wade has been the law for 20 years, that we should sustain and support it. And I sustain and support that law and the right of a woman to make that choice. And my personal beliefs, like the personal beliefs of other people, should not be brought into a political campaign. On the question of the choice issue, I have supported the Roe v. Wade. I am pro-choice. My opponent is multiple choice. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling you're growing inside. I'm multiple choice. I've got to... Re Mr. Romney, you have 15 I, seconds to rebut on, on the idea of multiple choice, I have to respond. I have my own beliefs, and those beliefs are very dear to me. One of them is that I do not impose my beliefs on other people. Many, many years ago, I had a dear, close family relative that was very close to me who passed away from an illegal abortion. It is since that time that my mother and my family have been committed to the belief that we can believe as we want, but we will not force our beliefs on others on that matter. Thank you. And you will not see me wavering on that or be a multiple choice. Thank you very much. Torn limb from limb. Politically, Mitt Romney's a little hard to pin down. He's running as a conservative, casting himself as more conservative than other candidates. There it comes right there, huh? But his track record in Massachusetts has opened him up to the charge of flip-flopping on some fundamental issues, like abortion. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I have since the time that my mom took that position when she ran in 1970 as a U.S. Senate candidate. How are you guys doing? You're doing great. That was Mitt Romney circa 1994 when he ran for the Senate against Ted Kennedy. Ow! Girl, I can't believe you went and got yourself pregnant. You can get yourself pregnant? When he ran for Massachusetts governor in 2002, Romney had the same position. I will preserve and protect a woman's right to choose. So when asked, will I preserve and protect a woman's right to choose, I make an unequivocal answer, yes. Struggling to get away from the abortionist suction hose. I will preserve and protect a woman's right to choose, and am devoted and dedicated to honoring my word in that regard. I will not change any provisions of Massachusetts's pro choice laws or have had their skin burned off of them by a saline abortion and with regards to this issue of age of consent it is currently 18 years old if one wants to have an abortion younger than that one must have the permission of one parent and if a parent doesn't go along one can go to a, a judge or justice to get that permission or how many of the lucky ones simply and quickly had their craniums crushed and they were decapitated by a pair of forceps no i want the voters to know exactly where i'm going to stand as governor, and that is I am not going to change our pro-choice laws in Massachusetts in any way. I will preserve them, I will protect them, I will enforce them, and therefore I'm not going to make any changes which would make it more difficult for a woman uh, to make that choice herself. Gentlemen, Ciccolini here may talk like an idiot and look like an idiot, but don't let that fool you. He really is an idiot. You're pro-life. Give me a freaking break. It's not a very pretty picture, is Romney Care was heartily endorsed by such Marxist scumbags as Hillary Clinton, Ted Chivas on the Rocks Kennedy, and that stalwart supporter of human rights and child prostitution, Planned Parenthood. Yeah, the flipping disaster that is Romney Care has essentially destroyed the Massachusetts economy, and Mitt refuses to apologize for it or even criticize it. 70% of the Republicans polled are split all over the map, but they know that they do not support Romney. The reason is simple. Romney is not a conservative. He's not, folks, but you can argue with me all day long on that, but he isn't.
Let's look at some of the Marxist totalitarian concepts enshrined in Romney care that Mitt Romney authored, supported, and continues to endorse and defend. First, the individual mandate. There are a lot of reasons not to elect me. Romney care, like its demon spawn Obamacare, mandates that every resident of Massachusetts must purchase the service commodity of health insurance as a condition of living and residing in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. When you can oh my God, is it dead? And please pay special attention to what I just said. These stiffy goats are oh please, they're just dying. As a condition of living in Massachusetts. Oh Jesus, that's terrible. Living, as in existing, as in waking up breathing. <laughs> I can't take this. Get up. Those who fail to purchase the specific service commodity of health insurance in Massachusetts forfeit the personal exemption on their state income tax. Get up, fainting goat, please. <laughs> So, just to make sure you understand this, Mitt Romney, conservative Republican, advocates taxing people on their existence. Oh my God! Don't do that to me! Romney care! Socialized medicine! Please, stop! Oh no, it's dead! It's all for the children, well, except for the ones that are inconvenient and less than nine months old, and then we'll frickin' slaughter the little bastards for 50 bucks. Romney care. What? we've got here is failure to communicate. Now let's talk about the mandate, Willard. I have stated this in regards to Obama and Obamacare, and now I'll repeat it for you. I will not be taxed on my existence. I will not comply with any requirement to purchase a good or service as a condition of waking up breathing in my own country. Surely you can't be serious. And if you think for a second that I'm going to lay down and be dehumanized by you or Obama or any other Marxist candy ass, you've got another thing coming, cha-cha. In fact, let me just break down for you what the reality of the situation would be if you were to be elected president and maintain your support of the mandate. You, Mitt, would have to put me in prison. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Just the same way that Obama would have to put me in prison. Because I will never, ever, ever pay a tax on my existence. Not a penny. I will never, ever surrender to Marxism. I will rot in a federal prison as a sovereign human being before I live one day on my knees under the jackboot of a Marxist state. If I wanted a joke, I'd follow you into the john and watch you take a leak. You need to understand that if you're going to be the president and you're going to perpetuate this socialized health care crap with its, with its attendant mandate, you are going to have to have me and millions of productive, law-abiding Americans thrown in prison because we aren't playing. You know what this is called, Mitt? It's called integrity. It's called being willing to sacrifice everything for one's principles and for the truth. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore! Now, since you have no integrity and are willing to whore out your principles to the highest bidder, you probably won't understand what you're seeing right now. This is why you need to go home, Willard. You need to go home and spend the rest of your life striving to acquire a shred of integrity. Oh my god, is that David Attenborough trying to talk to a sloth? Please. Finally, the issue of integrity and motives. Mitt Romney wants to be the President of the United States because Mitt Romney wants to be the President of the United States because Mitt Romney wants to be the President of the United States Romney wants to be the President of the United States Romney wants to be the President of the United States wants to be the President of the United States I'm sorry, it's my turn. Mitt Romney thinks that he is somehow entitled to the presidency and that it is now his turn. <laughs> Mitt Romney thinks that because the Republican National Committee promised him the 2012 nomination in exchange for Romney stepping aside in 2008 and handing the nomination to John McCain, that all of this is just a mere formality. You, I'm, uh, speaking. I'm speaking. The I'm speaking. I'm it's speaking. I'm speaking. Look, Mitt, we don't give a crap about what sleazy backroom deal you may have made with the RNC. Let me take my, my time, and then you can take your time. 
The office of the presidency is not a trophy to be handed around amongst a cadre of corrupt, elitist pricks like you. You have a problem with allowing someone to finish being, speaking. It's the office of a servant. And I suggest that if you want to become president of the United States, you got to let both people speak. So first, let me speak. The presidency is a sacrifice. Hold on just a moment. Hold on just a moment. Hold on just a moment. I can let you speak in a moment. Not an entitlement and certainly not a ticket to nine-figure increases in your personal net worth. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'll let you speak. Hold on a second. Let me speak. Hold on a second. And we all know that's what you're chasing. So get the sugar plum visions of the Mitt Romney Presidential Library in La Jolla out of your mind, because it ain't going to happen, Willard. The way this is going to work, the way this is going to work is that you get to ask your question, I get to give my answer. If you don't like my answer, you can vote for someone else. People, if you let the RNC and the media railroad you into Romney as the Republican nominee, we're going to be dead in the water. But now it's my turn to give my answer. The entire electoral issue of Obamacare is going to be completely eliminated and taken off the table because Romney did exactly the same thing in Massachusetts and refuses to this day to criticize it or apologize for it. Let, let, you had your turn. You had your turn, madam. Let me have mine. Romney is Obamacare's grandfather. I, hold, let me have mine. Yeah, listen, I'll give you the microphone in a moment, but let me complete. How are we going to run against and criticize the disaster that is Obamacare, much less repeal it, if your elitist, corrupt, insider nominee executed the template for Obamacare and financially destroyed his own state in the process? I'm sorry, it's my turn. Don't you see? Obama wants to run against Romney because then he won't have to defend Obamacare. The entire issue will just go away. Don't you see? Obama wants to run against Romney because then he won't have to defend Obamacare. The entire issue will just go away. You had yours. Now it's my turn. Would you please hold on a moment? Let me finish. Good. The RNC is completely corrupt. Look, let me speak. Then you get to speak. And so that is exactly who they are going to hand over. Just hold on a moment. All they want is to keep their palms greased and to keep their seats at the table of power. Just, just hold on. You're short on ears and long on mouth. Finally, I can tell you what the Romney campaign strategy against, against Obama will be right now. Uh, let me, let me, I'm happy to have your question, but let's, let's complete. Oh. As soon as you get Romney on a stage in a debate with Obama, Romney will do nothing but kiss Obama's ass. Madam, hold on a sec. Hold on a second. Let me, let me tell you. Why? Because Romney thinks that if he does this, then Obama won't call him a racist. You know, I, I don't have lobbyists running my campaign. I don't have lobbyists that are tied That's to my... That's not true, Governor. That is not true. Ron Kaufman is a lobbyist. He's not, you say he's he's running running did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said, Glenn? I said I don't have lobbyists running my campaign, and he's not running my campaign. Newsflash, y'all. Obama is going to call anyone who runs against him a racist. He is one of your senior advisors. He's an advisor, and the person who runs my campaign is Beth Myers, and I have a whole staff of, de of deputy campaign managers. You could run a resurrected Rosa Parks against Obama, and he'd call her a racist, because that's all Obama can do. Has Beth Matt, Myers been on the plane with you? Beth has Myers is, it has been on the plane with me, and Beth Myers is running my campaign. Absolutely. Do I know that? He sure as hell can't run on his record. Just there's window dressing. He's a potted plant. A lot, plant. Ron is a wonderful friend and advisor. He's not paid. He's an advisor like many others. Um, but I do not have lobbyists running my campaign. Glenn, I, I'm appreciative that you think that's funny, but, but Ron Kaufman is not even in the senior strategy meetings of our campaign. We don't have a minute. And I promise you, this is going to be the biggest race-baiting fiasco the world has ever seen. And Romney is going to play right into it. Who does, who does have lobbyists running their campaign by that definition? Excuse me, excuse me, Glenn. He is not in the senior strategy meetings of our campaign. All of the ignorant, uninformed masses will hear during the election cycle and debates is Obama talking about how great Obama is, the media talking about how great Obama is, and Mitt Romney talking about how great Obama is to prove that Mitt Romney isn't a racist.
Was he in debate sessions at all? Anytime? He's never. Any time? Has he ever been in a debate session? Sure. And if we allow that to happen, guess who's going to win the election? Is that, is that a senior strategy, strategy meeting? Is that a strategic Is that a senior strategy oh, meeting? Take, of our can campaign? take one more no. question. Mitt, go home. Thank you. Conservative America, wake up. He is not running my campaign. Okay, There was another lobby. Obviously, while we're using it, don't be played by the elitist, corrupt political establishment. Listen to my words. What? Listen to my words. I that's, said, that's semantics. So running your campaign that and is giving a you word. advice? What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. May God have mercy on your soul. Choose your own candidate. Come on. He's on the green. Hey, Glenn, save your arguments for... for he approaches me, Eric, okay? Let's, let's talk. Let's you and I talk. I'll be close to the Any time. What did you say? A candidate who is actually conservative, pro-life, and not a stinking Marxist. That I'm someone who is moderate and that my, my views are progressive. <laughs> So you need to do all of us a favor and just just go home. We don't care whether it's the $10 million lakefront compound up in New Hampshire or if you retire to your $12 million beachfront vacation compound in La Jolla. We the peasants really don't care, just as long as you get the hell out of the way. I'm Ann Barnhart, and in 2012, I'm thinking the sunrise might just be in the West. The challenge is not simply to replace Obama in 2012, but the real challenge is who and what we will replace him with. Hasta la vista, baby. You're crazy. I know you are, but what am I? Bonjour, je m'appelle Mitt Romney, et je suis président du comité d'organisation des Jeux Olympiques d'hiver de 2002 à Salt Lake City. You're what the French call les incompetents.